So, ring races, eh? It's pretty cool. I have uh, quite a bit of time on it already. I was honestly caught off guard by it being Shadow Drop when it did. But when I saw it, I picked it up, learned about it, and have seen a lot of mixed opinions on it. Some saying it's better than SRV2 card, some saying they ruined it, but where do I fall? Well, let's find out. Uh, I should point out though that this video is mostly unscripted. I have a lot of notes written down on what I want to talk about, but I'll cover the topics in a more rambly way, and I'm gonna trim it down later by editing. Just because I want to test the water with this format. With that out of the way, let's begin. So if you somehow stumbled into this video without knowing what SRV2 card is, here's a little bit of history. Uh, SRV2 card, or Sonic Rebel Blast 2 card, is a mod of the game Sonic Rebel Blast 2, which itself is a sequel to Sonic Rebel Blast, which was a Sonic fan game released in the 90s. And funny enough, Sonic Rebel Blast 2 is running on the Doom engine, so it's a mod of Doom, essentially. And a mod of a mod is SRV2 card, and the game is pretty infamous for how much you can mod the game to hell and back. You can get any playable character. Any playable character. And a lot of custom stages, and a lot of other modifications as well. It's gotten a lot of updates, and it was supposed to be prepared for update 2.0. But, uh... Update 2.0 ended up being uh, turned into Ring Racers because they added so much stuff to it. Thought it would be better to separate it from the original SRV2 card since it could be pretty divisive. Uh, good call, by the way. Now, how much did SRV2 card actually have? Well, the simple card racer. You can accelerate, steer, brake, look behind you, drift, and items. The standard stuff. Literally the same that Mario Kart has. Ring Racers, however. It had quite a few things, the spin dash, the fastball, rings, the bunch of new items, uh, fastball bounces, the insta whip. So many different mechanics that they had to explain a lot of them in the tutorial, which yes, you are forced to go through a tutorial, unless you're good enough, at the beginning of Ring Racers, simply because of how many mechanics they added. I see people take upwards of 40 minutes on the tutorials, by the way. It is pretty long. And honestly, I think that tutorial did not do the best job at explaining like when some mechanics are going to come into play. They explain how they work for the most part, but when something is more optimal, it's not really explained, as well as some mechanics being a little more obscure, looking at the old tricking system. And because of that, it kind of left a bad taste in other people's mouths. In my opinion, every single individual mechanic is actually not that hard to learn, but you are dumped with all of them from the get-go, that it gets very overwhelming. And it's also a lot more difficult to get someone into ring races because of that, because if you want to play a SRV2 card, you tell some people, hey, let's play card, plop a few controllers, and anyone can pick it up very easily, but ring racers, you do need more rigorous training for it. So it's a lot harder to actually just casually get into it unless you seriously want to grind it. So that alone puts it like more far apart from a uh, SRV2 card. If you ignore all of these additions, you could actually play the game pretty similarly to a SRV2 card because the actual driving physics feel pretty close. The problem is that the maps are not designed around just normal driving physics. They very much demand you to do all these new things. There's all the shortcuts with the trip wires, there's Plenty of tracks that require a lot of track. Fastball is required in some areas. And also just really good to know in general. Especially with the bounce. As well as some of the new items being a lot more complicated to understand in comparison to SRV2 card items. Now, I understand why some people dislike this game. A lot of the stuff that they added, it is a little much to keep track of, I'll admit. Even if I think a lot of it is a tutorial making it seem more complicated than it actually is, People are still going to enjoy SRV2 card way more, in some cases, and I understand that. But the extent that some people are having... Recently I uploaded a video that's comparing every track in SRV2 card with the Spring Racer's counterpart, and I got this comment, which... Huh? I understand not liking the game, but Souls-like? Really? <sighs> Jesus Christ, this is getting out of hand. One thing that's worth mentioning also is the fact that if you are a Sonic fan, or even a fan of Sega and a lot of deep cuts, 
you are going to enjoy a lot of the references they do in this game. There's so many places from the classic Sonic era, so many Deep Cut characters. If you are a Sonic nerd, you are going to geek out about this for a long time. This game has a much bigger focus on what you can do as a solo player. Because there are CPUs that you can raise, there's plenty of cups that you can actually do. There's plenty of missions and challenges that you can do, so if you don't have any friends to play with, you can still get a lot done with this game. And if you do have friends to play with, doing this first will get you more used to the game's physics. And you'll get to learn a lot more before you truly go online. Which can be a good thing, but some people just want to go online from the get-go, which, hey, there is a password to unlock everything if you want to skip this, all the stuff, but you shouldn't have to do that. Believe me, the practice goes a long way. Honestly, one of my favorite parts of the early game was... Look at the spray cans. It's a shame that after 100 they just disappear from all the stages because I really like looking through every nook and cranny of the stage to find a spray can. I guess that's why the Mystic Melody server is here, because it was more hidden, but uh... Man... I really like the spray can hunt. I wish they, had, they added more. I hope they add more in the future patch, so that way I can hunt for the rest of the stages. Another thing about the challenges is that they can be a little interesting. It seems to be a little arbitrary which ones are on Grand Primo versus which ones are just whatever. Which, for the ones that are just whatever, you can cheese the hell out of them, but like the ones that are on Grand Prix, if you fail it, you have to do the whole cup again a little bit time, which is annoying. And there's also some challenges that are a little obscure, some that are funny. It's a little interesting just seeing some of the decision making with these. I like them as a whole, but man, they are quite something. Another thing that really sells into the solo player spotlight thing is that there's so many modes in comparison. If you were playing solo in SRV2 card, you would get what? Time attack and free play? And that's it. You needed mods to load anything else. But here you have Grand Prix, you have Free Play, you have Time Attack, you have SGB Chase, you have the Prison Levels, which is basically Battle Mode for single player. By the way, Battle Mode goes crazy in this game. There's significantly more options in game modes. Let's talk about the CPUs, right? Because their difficulty is uh, a lot harder than you would anticipate. They actually do shortcuts and stuff. And they go really fast. They rubber band like crazy to the point where they had to nerf them in a patch, actually. They were just that strong. But they play smart. They know how to attack well. And you're gonna be always on your toes whenever you are facing the CPUs in the Grand Prix modes. Unless you're on easy mode, which is valid. But the fact that you have to be on your toes also means that you have to... It forces you to get better at the game. Which prepares you more for online, really. But that's only if you understand the mechanics in the first place, which, in the first place, which if you don't, uh, it might be a bit of a struggle. Even in the Grand Prix mode, you have to make sure you stay on your toes, simply because, well, the ending of the level ranks you. You get a lot of extra lives, yes, there are lives in this kind of race, so just like Super Mario Kart. You get a lot of extra lives depending on how many rings you get, and uh, you also get ranked at the end of stages depending on your performance. Getting lap bonuses at the end of every lap, depending on your position, as well as, you know, getting the placement at the end of the cup. And uh, it's really good to stack up on those lives because... and also getting a good ranking, because that way you will get a chance at a special stage in a kart racer. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I really love these special stages. I was really bad at them at first, because they are pretty hard, all this considered. But once you get better at them, they're actually not that bad. Basically, you gotta chase this claw machine, you gotta break it, and then you gotta collect the emerald after. Simple concept, kinda hard to get used to it because of the card physics, and also the fact that you kinda have to learn the layouts a lot of the time, which makes it more accurate to classic Sonic special stages, really. But once you get that perfect run, it is all so satisfying. But some of those stages can get really hard, especially Seal Star 14. Wait, 14? Yep. The Super Emeralds are here now, and they are on a tier of their own. And they are, uh... Quite a challenge, to say the least. They require more hits to break, the layouts are overall harder, the music is more intense to sell the fact that it's significantly harder. At least you only unlock them after you beat the 7 main stages, so you're more prepared for them. The training wheels are off, you have to do it for real now. And I actually kinda like that, it's like an extra challenge. Although Seal Star 14 can suck my dick, holy shit. That stage sucks ass. <sighs> if I had to complain about something about this game, 
is what I mentioned earlier. The learning curve for it is significantly steeper than SMV2 card and has turned people off. My first impressions of the game were not great. That tutorial did not leave the best first impression on me. But after I got used to it, I started really falling in love with this game. There's even a mystic melody for crying out loud. You can find the mystic melody and find shrines and get more unlockables that way. Like, you are encouraged to explore these stages, but like... You wouldn't get that far if you got stuck in the tutorial. Because it is pretty far when you unlock it. Uh, some of the character choices seem to be a little more favoritism. All of Team Chaotix except Vector. I have Vector Man, I guess. We don't have anything past Sonic 06 before IDW. I don't know. I like the character roster personally, but there's definitely some glaring omissions. Uh, some of the tracks can be a little uh, weird. Why did Chemical Facility, a hell map in SMB2 card, get turned into a regular map here? Why is that peg 8 minutes long? And it just feels like there's a lot of jank in there as well. I like my jank in my video games, but some people don't. And some of it can be a little excessive, admittedly. And my biggest issue with the game is that even the tutorial helps you with some of the new mechanics. In other stuff, like how the items work and whatever, there is zero help. The game does not do the best job at communicating how a lot of mechanics work, like like exactly. They give you the basics of it, but they don't tell you the full picture. Like, I had spent a very long time before figuring out exactly how the ghosts work, or the fire shield, and it's just a little unclear. That's one of my biggest issues with the game. Actual online is pretty similar to SOV2 card, really, in terms of feel. There's even input delay on some stuff, but that's something that SOV2 card had, and it's a fan game, so it's forgivable. The main difference is you actually get a choice between servers with mods or without mods. You get that choice up front when you're looking for servers. And unlike SV2 card, Ring Racers feels like a more complete game, even without mods. Because SV2 card only had, what, five characters and a decent track selection, but nothing that special. You needed a lot of mods to make it, like, stand out. This game, you can play without mods and it feels very complete. But you still have the option to put in mods if you really want to. Like, say, mods that can add new characters, or maybe custom tracks. I personally have not messed around with mods that much in Ring Racers compared to SMB2 cards, but that goes to show how much more complete the experience is without mods. But it is good that the option is there for those that do like it. As a little bonus, I was actually interested in this character, Mel, when I saw her. I know nothing about her before I saw this game, but I ended up really clicking with her. And it kind of had a bit of a smash effect where seeing her for the first time made me look up a bit of her own origin game. Uh, pretty interesting actually. Doesn't really affect the game ranking at all, it's just something new that happened. That's mostly all I wanted to cover. So, what's the verdict? I think this game is really cool, but I can understand why some people would prefer SRV2 card. The simplicity of it does really help a lot to get into it for newer players. And unless you are already dedicated to it, you probably won't really get into Ring Racers nearly as easily. But if you were, then oh boy, if you're willing to put in the time to learn the game, it can be really satisfying. I have not had this much fun with a fan game since AM2R in 2016. And honestly, I think this is my favorite card racer ever. It's just so fluid, it just feels so nice, it's so chaotic. It kind of it, it kind of scratches all the itches, honestly. It's not absolutely perfect, it definitely has some issues, but for me, I'm willing to, go, to look past them. I really, really like this game. And if you got turned off by the, by the tutorial, you should honestly give it another chance. The Grand Prix does a much better job at explaining to you how mechanics are done, because it gradually introduces you to them instead of throwing them all at you in the tutorial. If, if you still don't like it past that, that's fine. But I would recommend you give it another shot, just in case. Anyway, that's it for this video. Are you someone that has been grinding break races as much as I have, playing it passively, or just hate it? Let me know in the comments, because I am very interested in seeing more opinions about this game, with how divisive it's been. That's it for me, thank you all so much for watching, and take care.